Okay, and now for our next talk on the Web3 social layer, Web3 social, the next wave of innovation by Stani Kulichov. Stani is the founder and CEO of Ave Companies. He was studying law at the University of Helsinki when he first began learning about smart contracts and thus about the Ethereum blockchain network. This led to an exploration of how blockchain technology could impact the traditional financial system. Please welcome Stani to the stage. <laughs> Thank you. GM, um, always feeling good. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so I want to thank the um, uh, Ethereum Foundation for organizing uh, DEF CON. It's been a very, very busy week, um, at least for me and probably for everyone else. Um, there's been a lot of good talks um, here and um, and it's the last day, so you know the the best talk is probably uh, amongst here too. Um, <laughs> um, don't want to brag too much, but so okay. Today we're going to talk about Web3 Social um, and as a next innovation. Let's see if we get this. Yeah, perfect. So something I want to talk about is that um, the innovation for the past. Um, years or decades um, has grown quite substan substantially and has accelerated. So um, if you look at back for 100 years, uh, we have technologies, for example, like telephone that has been invented uh, over 100 years ago and it took decades to actually adopt. Uh, automobiles, um, cars, for example, took decades as well. Um, and more recently, for example, um, uh, the television has got higher acceleration and, and also uh, the infrastructure underneath the internet, the, the computer. And what we've seen different kinds of patterns is that um, the more we get infrastructure, um, the more we get uh, compounding um, acceleration of innovation. And this is one of the reasons for why, for example, the internet infrastructure has grown substantially. Um, and if we look into the, um, let me guess, Oh, it's, oh, okay, cool, yeah, perfect. If you look into the actually uh, recent innovation, what is happening in internet um, uh, ecosystem is that we have a lot of adoption uh, in a very high acceleration uh, curve uh, online. So what it means that when you have already a um, complete infrastructure, it's very easy to innovate and have this compounding effect. And recently uh, we've seen, for example, um, uh, TikTok being one of the uh, recent examples of, of how we had uh, a scale adoption from uh, zero users to one billion users in uh, about roughly um, seven years since um, the beginning. Um, and I don't know where is this thing <laughs> I need to point out. Where should I point out? Okay. Oh. Cool, yeah. So yeah, so what I wanna say is that the internet adoption um, is global, so we're dealing with technologies that are uh, affecting everyone, every single um, human in the planet, and there is a large scale uh, empowerment um, uh, that is related to not only the internet, what, what we're doing here um, in the um, Ethereum community and across, across the blockchain space. Um, I mean, even though with high amount of um, adoption and penetration, there are still places where, uh, uh, in some regions, the adoption of the internet uh, isn't really um, in its fullest at the moment. So, for example, if you look at uh, the graph of uh, uh, sub uh, the sub-Saharan Africa, we have adoption of roughly 30% um, um, of population using the internet itself. Uh, Colombia is at 70%, so it's very regional, and, and there's still uh, places where uh, we need infrastructure to, to innovate. Um, but regardless of um, the infrastructure, um, things are gonna change uh, quite a lot in the future. So the, the way I see how innovation works, and specifically um, this particular chart, kind of like a, I would say like a circle of 
different components um, demonstrates uh, what innovation is for me, like how I approach innovation um, and what are the ingredients to uh, come up with a product and also get that product into a growth cycle. So obviously you have the opportunity there, so basically you recognize a, a problem or an opportunity to solve uh, having knowledge about the um, uh, problem you're trying to solve, expectations, understanding what people actually need, uh, the talent, the team members that you're building with, and they actually craft, and the craft is what I call um, the, the, the product itself. Obviously, there is things like funding related and also uh, growth. Now, what's um, super exciting about uh, Web3 uh, and innovation in Web3 is that we rely on open networks. And open networks, they uh, create accessibility, so they create access for everyone here uh, today, for example, to contribute not only what uh, we're building in the Ave team, um, uh, but any project in the ecosystem, uh, because they're relying in the open network idea and open source uh, technology. So, yeah, and one important component also is the, the, the um, culture aspect. So culture equals, for me, um, also community. So uh, when you build open networks, open infrastructures, uh, you're actually in a different kind of a dynamic setting than as if you will be building um, a product within um, a company uh, or a service, for example. This means that when you have accessibility, uh, people across globally, they need to find a way to connect, share ideas, um, and, and build actually different kinds of uh, concepts and, um, and actual community around a product. Because accessibility also means that the users are the ones that are part of the um, innovation flywheel and in, in, in an important part, actually, of making that innovation um, happen. Um, one important thing I have realized uh, in the past that um, Web3 is something that's going to touch everywhere. So it's not only specifically related to one particular area um, to solve. And we've seen, obviously, with um, how Web3 has born. Um, so Bitcoin tried to solve the idea of how we can actually transfer value between humans across globally uh, without intermediaries um, and create a public money as public goods. And obviously with the innovation of uh, Ethereum and uh, the Ethereum virtual uh, machine, um, you could actually create programmable applications um, on the blockchain. And because we tried to solve financial um, problems and opportunities in the beginning, we started to actually continue solving those um, uh, within our community. And that's where DeFi has um, been very successful. So, but to get actually beyond what we have today uh, in our community uh, and the user base, we actually need something more um, than, for example, decentralized finance. Um, and just an example is that uh, decentralized finance um, is uh, incredible innovation what um, our space has been able to uh, create. It means that every one of us has accessibility uh, to a fair, transparent market across globally. Um, and decentralized finance doesn't look into your background, what you are doing when you're actually participating in these markets or when you're uh, building uh, part of the uh, community. But to get into more bigger adoption, we need to realize that we have to go beyond financial applications and find more things that solve uh, human problems and um, feed their needs as well. And I personally, with my team, uh, think that social is the next, uh, or at least the killer app um, for Web3. And the reason is that um, we currently have almost 5 billion um, users on social media, and it's growing constantly. We also have um, um, equal amount of, almost equal amount of um, internet users, um, social media users than we have internet users. So there is uh, a big opportunity in social media, and we also see that it's global phenomena. And effectively, if you look at this chart here, um, we see a lot of social media usage in Southern America, but also in Asia compared to, for example, the regions of 
Europe and uh, North uh, America. Um, and we could actually ask ourselves, why do we have um, social media? Why, there, why social media is important um, in, in the first place? So what I have been looking into is that there's definitely a need for people to connect with each other uh, for particular different reasons. And there's also need for create. So humans has, have always had the um, idea of being a creator. So here's a picture of one of the oldest findings of uh, creativity um, uh, back in a um, long, long time ago. Um, so um, social media, it allows us to connect with people, one-on-one uh, -on -one basis, create relationships, um, and also in groups, coming together and forming a community um, on uh, topics that we care about, it, care about it. And social media is very vital to our lives because with internet and being able to connect with each other, we are able to learn from each other directly from the people uh, rather than example from institutions. Um, we also have the sense of uh, belonging when we can create um, communities. And part of the adoption also is um, that we can actually do this connectivity uh, in scale across the globe. And I really love this particular slide because um, there is this concept of um, six degrees of separation, uh, which means that we all people here um, and everywhere are connected to each other across uh, six hubs of uh, friends of friends. So. Um, to any person um, in the um, uh, uh, planet. And there's actually recent studies as well um, that this hub distance actually is becoming even more uh, narrow, and we see that it's roughly 4.7 uh, degrees. So almost every fifth person um, you are connected with um, in the planet. And part of that is because the connectivity is more easier, we have access to internet, uh, we can connect to anyone, any person in the planet on the topics that are interesting uh, for us. So what happens when we are actually using social media um, is that we create social capital. Social capital is something we all have, regardless of the technology. So we have social capital when we are forming friendships, uh, when we are um, connecting with people when we are sharing ideas uh, or sharing uh, news. The big problem at the moment is that we create a lot of this social capital actually uh, online and we're using uh, platforms um, such as uh, the bigger uh, social media platforms where we are creating these um, networks and connectivity and at the same time we're publishing uh, content. And these platforms are designed um, to thrive as a, as a basic platform um, instead of actually um, thriving to preserve your social capital or sh align with your own um, ideas. So what I see is that um, the Web2 Social is at the moment a zero-sum game uh, for many participants that create uh, social capital. And one of the issues is that all of the users are actually locked in a particular platform. So you can't actually um, take your social uh, capital and um, do a digital exit and trans transport it to a, a, a new platform or a new venue where you might find uh, interesting ways to connect with your peers and share ideas. Creators at the current state lack of uh, distribution and for the same reasons um, you are locked in into these particular platforms and also it's very hard to actually monetize beyond um, sharing um, the traffic of what you're getting to um, maybe your home page and for the developers um, there is actually lack of um, freedom to come and and build and innovate um, ways to how to connect with people, innovate on the experiences as well, um, and create new um, applications and, and new networks. So I believe that Web2 Social is ripe for uh, disruption at the moment, 
And I think Web3 Social is something that creates the positive some value. So it builds the value for the users and it builds, builds the value uh, for the community. And what I want to introduce here is the Web3 Social layer, the components that are actually and the ingredients um, that bring that um, uh, bring these benefits for for all those three parties: the users, um, the creators, and also the developers. So, why Web3 uh, is a game changer, especially in the social space, um, is because the creators are getting ownership of their um, content distribution. So, you as a creator can actually uh, decide how you uh, distribute content to your audience. You also own that relationship between you and your peers, and it's not locked into a particular uh, platform. And because you're not locked into a particular uh, platform, as a user, you have the choice to actually select the experiences and the algorithms uh, that serve you the most and are aligned you, with you uh, the most. And for developers, it means also when all of the Web3 is built on top of the open networks, uh, you have the accessibility to improve these networks and actually develop them further. So you have access to develop the networks. In Web3 space, um, I mean, it's still growing quite a lot. There's more investments in the uh, region. We also have locally here in Colombia, 6.1% are owning um, cryptocurrency. And we also see here in Colombia that it's one of the countries that are getting um, accelerated adoption at the moment, including uh, some of these countries in Asia, like Vietnam, also India, uh, Turkey, and, and amongst others. So we're, uh, in this perspective, we're in the right place to talk about um, Web3 as um, an open networks and, and how it could, we could build um, them further. So we see Web3 social as a green field of opportunity. There are ingredients that are very valuable when you build Web3 Social. So the networks must be open, meaning that anyone can actually compute on the data that is on Web3 Social, can actually use these components, smart contract libraries, um, and also um, take what is already existing, improve it, and, uh, and make it available to people. Um, and also one key point is the decentralization. So what makes Web3 Social very valuable is the architecture. And the architecture is where you as a user uh, own your profile uh, on chain and you own your social graph and connectivity, which means that you own your social capital. And here's the social layer where individuals, they have their identity. Um, you have social verification when you are connecting with the peers and for the groups, uh, what you can do is that you have community-owned interest graphs, uh, open algorithms. So when we take the base layer um, and give the ownership to the users, and what it allows us to do is that first time ever, anyone can actually build new algorithms. And these algorithms do not need to be black boxes. Um, they can actually be transparent algorithms where uh, developers are explaining what kind of an algorithm and what data points that algorithm uh, is using. And that brings alignment between developers, the users, and the communities. And for creators, it means that actually when you own your um, distribution channel, it also unlocks your, you, a new ways of actually um, creating content and creating experiences based on the Web3 social um, uh, footprint. And also monetization is key part. So um, monetization is, and financialization is something that is part of the um, Web3 value proposition. And with, with the idea of owning the identity, at the same time, it means that um, you can actually own the way you monetize. And you don't have to be relying on the platforms, but actually find a venue um, with your social graph and with your profile and actually distribute the content and monetize the way uh, you want. So Web3 Social, um, it unlocks the power of creativity, connections, 
um, and it brings more innovation. So what we did with um, financial applications, we can actually do the same for non-financial applications. And the reason why it's important for us is that this is, this is the path how we can bring more users into the space. It means that um, people who don't necessarily have that financial capital, but they're um, rich on social capital, can actually have their ownership of that and enter into the space and use non-financial applications and also generate value for them. Um, and what's interesting about social capital compared to financial capital is that financial capital you can spend, but social capital is something that you can carry through your whole life. And this is why we need actually people to come uh, to the Web3 space to also non-financial applications and building more uh, utility. So one big question for us is that um, who will build this new generation social media applications? And we have a perfect answer for this one. It's you. Since you are here at DEF CON and it's a developer conference, I'm pretty sure that there are people here that can take the opportunity and build some very interesting applications and use cases and empower um, the users and empower the, 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 the creators um, and other developers and even create social media applications that have better values, transparency, and are aligned with, with different user bases as well. Last thing is that um, if you don't have a Lens profile yet, you can scan this QR code, um, and later you can claim a Lens profile, and you can actually test drive Web3 Social um, as well. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>